Yeah, where better to start with the Rue del Sol, or shall we say the Tarabgacha show? He also won a race in Spain before, a gravel race, beginning of the week. So actually, when we released the episode three, he actually won a race there. So we can't not mention that as well. So uh, yeah, what have you guys kind of found of the <laughs> the Rue del Sol slash Tarabgacha show? Even UAE show, shall we say? Yeah, that's true. I mean... Tegaccio winning, oh, what, how do you pronounce it? It's like the Jean into Pastelia, interior, whatever the race is. The it's gravel the, one. It's the olive yeah. oil race. Um, olive oil race. If you win it, you, you get a big, big olive. Um, I believe it's the cl- Classica de Cayenne is the area it's in, but it's famed for its olive oil. Oh, good. That's a good, that's a good fact. I like that. But uh, I think it did, I, mean, I like that because it was an inclination as to Pegaccio's, obviously, per going to Stardi again in like two weeks time or whatever so he's clearly still good on the gravel and uh, he didn't even panic when he had a front wheel puncture or anything i mean he did have like a minute 30 advantage so like i guess he didn't have too much to worry about but he's clearly looking good on the the off-road sections and and there was that cobble climbing route to del sol i can't remember what it was called up to the finish but it was like this really beautiful looking castle and he did really well on some really aggressive Spanish cobbles there. Obviously not like for like for the Flemish cobbles, but you know, still a good inclination that Pagatra is still good on multiple terrains and he just picked up so many yeah, he didn't he what was it that you said you he was just like he'd won if you include his twenty twenty two, he'd won like five days in a row. Is that right? Yeah, he won Varezini and then he won Lombardia, one in Hayen, won the first two stages in Andalusia which makes it five racing days in a row with five victories. If you compare, it's a, it's been, it's been, it has been achieved before, but by riders, if I recall, it was like maybe Yaka Marechko in the Tour of Hainan Lake, which is like some second tier Chinese race where there's like 15 sprint stages and it sort of opens itself up to multiple victories. But Pog has done it on very different terrains, uh, mountain stages, hilly stages, a one day race, one day race with gravel and a monument. It's it's fan- it's honestly unprecedented in, in, in our in our era well yeah we've seen him do this amazing feat we've seen him win flat time trials win uh, hilly time trials mountain stages etc etc is Tarugacha the complete rider right now of the current peloton he has to be there's th- there is no other rider that, that brings in such reliable all-round skills as Tari Pagacha you can rely on him to be there in the mountain stage. Whether he's got teammates or not, he will still provide you with a show, with a good performance. On the hill stages as well, on these long rolling profiles, he really does just sort of hang in there and has that boy racer energy to keep things going. And even when it comes down to reduced bun sprints, he is also still there in the mix. Varazzini, the first of his five wins in a row, he won that one in a reduced bunch sprint because he does just have that kick on him. There is no rider that comes close to Tadi Pogaccia in terms of his versatility, in terms of his prestige and his racing spirit. I think that is just almost a done debate in, in this in the sport at the moment. Jonas Vingago, yes, he challenged him at last year's Tour de France, but Vingago has not won a monument, neither has he won an Olympic medal or a Tour de France time trial. I I, I really do think that Pogaccia is, is one of a kind in this generation. I agree, but at the same time, I do think Wout van Aert yeah, I was I was thinking that. <laughs> Quite complete. I, I I agree. I don't think that Wild and Art brings the the flamboyance that Pigacha does. That I'd much rather watch Pigacha because I know that he's really unpredictable. The only unpredictability that we saw from Wild was in what was it like stage three, four, um, to Calais in the tour last year where he attacked. That was the only kind of slight unpredictability that we saw from from Wild. I'm not sure if that's just because like Yumbo kind of control that, but Moment two. That was from a breakaway. Yeah. It's it's it, yeah. it's it's slightly different. He hasn't won sort of a big GC Rumble Mountain stage in yeah. his career. If he were to have won on Otakam at this year's what well, last year's Tour de France, now yeah. I think that really would have thrown his name in the ring as one of the most versatile riders. But Pogacar, I think, is simply unrivaled in in this. Wout van Aert has not contended the Grand Tour GC. Um, he has not won a UCI World Tour one week long stage race, but Wout has won on the Champs Elysees, which I don't. I know it's not like it's not a monument, but it's like it's. I think they're both really versatile, and they're definitely Pog one and Wout van Aert two because they're yeah. both like we. Yeah, he hasn't won a mountain stage, Wout van Aert, but Tad Bagacha hasn't beaten the best sprinters on a flat stage. So I think they're so unique, both of them. But yeah, Tad Bagacha in terms of GC riders. There's no one who rivaling. Yeah, 
uh, Roglic, no, Vingo, no, uh, Giant Hindley, no. <laughs> Chris Froome, even when he was on his peak, wasn't any like Froome wasn't competing in Strad of Yankee or riding in the Ronde van Flanderen or, yeah, well, hopefully Tad Bogacha rides Pyro Bay this year. That would be a spectacle, M- almost cool. Bernard esque. Uh, in a way, and that's the rider that I think Tadwagacha really is starting to remind me of. Yeah, yeah. We, we, I guess it's been quite hard for a rider in nowadays to really be that sort of everything, like Merck sort of was back in the day, where they literally could do everything at the top level. I think even nowadays, you know, Pogacar is good at everything apart from a bunch sprint. <laughs> Pretty much. And Wout Bernard is good at everything apart from competing in like GC in a grand tour. So I think they're pretty much, those two are as close to the most kind of well rounded riders that we have in this peloton. I don't really think that anybody else comes close. I, I, I think as well, with the, the, the Ruta del Sol, the context we have of this past week, it really does illustrate Pogacha's racing spirit. His sort of second nature to win races in whatever way possible first stage big attack with sort of what 30 kilometers to go over a mountain distancing everybody um using that to his advantage with a 38 second gap on the line to second place which was Mikel Landa stage two he tried to do the same thing it didn't work he got chased down but he still managed to win and sort of gallop away away from the group in the end on that cobble climb as you mentioned with him and Enric Maas then even on the the, the third stage he won in, in the week it was a stronger challenge from Maas but he still managed to win the stage without sort of that long range attack aspect on stage five, which was won by Uma Fraile, he still gained about 10 seconds or so on his GC rivals, including Enric Mas. I really do think Pogacar, it's just this racing is second nature to him. He he is so cool, calm, and collected. That mentality he has on and off the bike. He's he's sort of he's the meme king of, of cycling. I think he's very understated off the bike. He's a he's a nice guy, very cool, calm, and collected. Wow, for art, I don't quite think he has that, that that same sort of chilled out nature. He is more of a circus around him in terms of Belgium, also in terms of his team. If you listen to his interviews, he's a little bit more hot headed than then Pogacar, who's just cool, calm, collected. And he's just a kid on his bike. Was, I was in Slovenia last year following Pogacar there, and one of um, one, one journalist said he was a psycho in terms of the fact that he just. He doesn't mind all, all the suffering he goes through on a bike to win a bike race. He wants to do it. He seeks enjoyment out of all of this racing. And I think that that is just unrivaled from Pogaccia. He brings something to the table that no one else in the professional peloton does. Riders like Pogaccia are really integral for this sport. Like If somebody new is to come to watch the sport for, as an outsider, it's those characteristics like a Pogaccia, like a Alaphilippe and a Van der Poel, who really... You know, because as cyclists, we, you don't root for a team. You almost root for individual people and you form an attachment to a person. Yeah, having Pogaccia there as that really charismatic leader is uh, integral to the success of this sport, I think. I mean, what Sagan was in his yeah, day. Yeah, exactly. Like Sagan basically like spearheaded that sort of rider with like a large social media following as well. Like those are essentially the, the future of the sport to try and get people in because if they can interest people then they interest people in the sport so yeah the catch is great given how in sort of Merck scene almost his past couple of seasons have been particularly 2021 with all those stage race wins olympic medal yellow jersey and two monument victories um yeah we, we hype him up an awful lot but he is sort of he's worth a million sort of hype ups um in in this sport he sometimes goes a little bit sort of underappreciated i don't know whether it's because he's from slovenia it's a smaller nation and a little bit overshadowed by roglic i remember in slovenia he's roglic is more popular more famous than than, than pogacar is which is sort of bamboozling pogacar's uh, roglic is, is on billboards promoting slovenian banks pogacar is not he's got a sandwich at a supermarket it's a little bit different Whereas uh, it, it doesn't, for some reason, it doesn't really make sense. To, are people not really warming to UAE as a squad? Are people sort of, I don't know, are they, are they fed up of Pogaccia? I don't know, but he really does. He, we should not underappreciate how much he brings. Without Pogaccia, I think this sport would just be very sale. We'd be going back to the 2015, sort of 2015 through 18 era of, of cycling, which was a little bit, a, a little bit mundane, a little bit dull, to be honest, where we would sort of have a big team domination. Huon Chris Froome would win. I think Pogacar brings something different. He's aggressive, ride or die attitude. And we saw it last year's Tour de France. He can be beaten. And it makes him sort of seem a little bit more human. <laughs> 